little bit. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that was good, Brenda. I love that song. I do too. When I heard it this morning, they were harmonizing on that. Oh, well, so no, that's so cool that you heard that. Yeah. It was on the Bluegrass Channel. Yeah. They do gospel in the morning on Saturdays. Sundays, I mean. So I listen to it coming. Yeah. Y'all getting it? Good morning. There you go. Now we're talking. Y'all come on in. Grab a chair. Grab a chair and then stand up. Yeah, then stand up. That's tricky. Let's sing this morning. Let's pray first. There's a lot going on in this old world. Father God, thank you for the day today, Lord. There is a lot going on in this world, Lord. Everywhere I see, I see Scripture, I think, being fulfilled. Lord, you're in control. We know that. It's hard for us not to worry about the things that are going on in the world. Lord, here at home, we're in the middle of a drought. It's probably as dry as it's ever been. We've got sickness around us. We've got death around us, Lord. We've got loved ones that are gone. We've got folks traveling. Lord, our country here at home, domestically, we've got all kinds of things going on. As you well know, we're not telling you anything you don't know, but you told us to pray, and so that's what we do, Lord. And for this world, uh, the battles, the wars, Lord, that are going on, we lift those people up to you, Lord. And like Bob prayed this morning, I, there's an evil man over there trying to take over the world. And so, Lord, we pray that you'd touch him. That he'd see the error of his ways, Lord. And so help us to be confident in your word and to look anxiously for your return, Lord. Forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning, let's tell it to Jesus. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do the tears flow down your cheeks and move it? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Have you seen that two men's eyes are moving? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is the friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do you fear the gathering clouds of sorrow? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you anxious? What shall be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is the friend that's well known. You know other such a friend or other. Tell it to Jesus alone. Are you troubled at the thought of dying? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. For Christ's coming kingdom are you sighing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Have a seat and tell it to Jesus.
Well, it's a beautiful morning outside, beautiful morning inside, and uh, we have a few announcements. Uh, soup and salad this Wednesday night, uh, 5 o'clock, uh, and the elders are meeting at 5.30, elders. But also at 6 o'clock, we've decided that uh, if there's any business that needs to be transacted, it's a good night to do it when we have a meal uh, in, in the barn. Uh, we'll move over here at 6, but we do have uh, a leadership team recommendation about uh, Hope Choice. Uh, and so we've got a recommendation and maybe others uh, that we'll act on on Wednesday evening. Uh, God's blessing, continuing to bless the church financially so that we're able to do some things and we're able to bless some people. And uh, we want to do that. And we believe with all our hearts, if we don't, God may say, I can cut off the flow just as easily as I can turn it on. So uh, we'll, we'll try to do that on Wednesday evening. Uh, teachers and nursery meeting next Sunday morning at 9 o'clock in the barn. So teachers and nursery workers, you've got a meeting next Sunday morning. And lastly, down where it says teachers training teachers, teachers teaching teachers, uh, that meets not in the first portable, it meets in the youth building. And uh, so it'll be, it, and has been for several weeks. You already know that probably, but we'll change that in the bulletin so that uh, we're meeting uh, that class in the youth building. I got to tell you, uh, Joe told me this morning we had 18 in that class. And uh, the class uh, that I'm teaching in the barn, I think was about as large as it ever has been. You, I got to tell you, folks, if you're teaching a class and somebody comes to you and says, let's divide this class up, I hope you'll say, absolutely. You don't hurt a class by dividing it. You'll see both those classes grow. We're, we're so territorial about some things. We try to, we try to keep our little, uh, our four and no more. No, if somebody comes and says, we're going to start a new class, uh, and, and you're part of the, that s division, not split. Start to say split, but it's not a split, it's a division. You just say, have at it, because we'll all grow by doing that. We'll all grow. Actually, several years, uh, months ago, I guess, we started a, a new class for uh, single adults. And how many did y'all have this morning, Pat? Seven, and uh, I don't know how many we had in, in the class I teach. Uh, Joe had 18, uh, and uh, that's, I bet we had 70-something people in, in adult classes this morning. And so isn't that good? And the, the, the nurseries are growing. Uh, sometimes the nursery workers are a little glassy-eyed because <laughs> they've got several children in those classes. So that's the announcements. I think that's everything that, is there anything that you can think of? Don't forget that tonight if you're involved in Christian ministry certificate training, uh, we meet at six o'clock in the barn. Uh, got a good class tonight. It's, uh, it's, it's getting a little harder as we go along, I find. And uh, so I'm just thankful that we can spend the time together on Sunday evenings here at the church. All right, that's it. Oh, Carissa's got picture day. Oh, there it is. Today, right after church, in the barn. Uh, folks, if you haven't had your picture taken for the directory, People really want to know what you look like. They, uh, after they see your picture, maybe they won't. But right now they do. And uh, they'll see your name in the directory. And they won't know, they still won't know what you look like and who you are. 
So right after this service, Chris will be over here in the barn with her camera and she'll get pictures for the directory. Uh, and if you haven't had your picture taken, please, uh, it won't take very long and uh, Chris will get your picture and get you out and uh, we'd sure like to have you have your picture so we'll know what you look like. All right, thank you so much. We're ready. This is a while when I gotta get ready. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. Now while I was praying, somebody touch me while I was praying. Somebody touch me while I was praying. Somebody touch me, it must have been the hand of the Lord. Now while I was singing, somebody touch me while I was singing. Somebody touch me while I was singing. Somebody touch me, it must have been the hand of the Lord. Let me a little bit, girl. Preaching, somebody touch me while I was preaching. Somebody touch me while I was preaching. Somebody touch me, it must have been the hand of the Lord. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, it must have been the hand of the Lord. Yes, it must have been the hand of the Lord. golden deed by helping those who are in need my life on earth is but a span and so I'll do the best I can life's even sun is sinking low a few more days
to be a child child of God each day. My light must shine along the way. I'll sing His praise praise while the ages roll roll and strive to help some troubled soul. The only Is one that's kind, one that's kind and good and pure. And for God, I'll take my stand. Each day I live a helping hand. Helping hand. Life's evening sun, Life's evening sun is, sinking is sinking low. A few more days. A few more days. deeds that I have done where there will be no setting sun where there will be no setting sun all right kids it's time to head out to Sunday school And we're ready for prayer time. Thank you, Joe. Here's uh, an unknown prayer request. Uh, Somebody knows, but we, we just don't know who made the request. But a friend whose daughter fell out of a tree... And now the little girl or the the lady, I'm not sure, is on a respirator with no brain activity. Uh, So we're going to pray about that. God knows. Cindy Lebowski is en route to Dallas. Her ex-husband passed away. They found him dead at least uh, Saturday in his apartment. And so she's going down there to help the kids uh, with this time of grief. We prayed last Sunday for Bob Mars, and uh, he did pass away on February 23rd, and so we're praying for his family. Bob was a Christian. Uh, At least uh, he lived that out, and uh, so he uh, is in heaven. Uh, Gina Cobb has asked that we, uh, or at least she's reported that her son Daryl is home and doing good, uh, Gene, so that's good. Brandon Brady, we're praying for him. He's the brother of Brian Brady. He's in detox and rehab and uh, ask that we pray for him. Uh, Tech Smith is going to have a wrist joint replacement. Uh, Tex, when is that? Friday. Next Friday. All right. And uh, have you had one already? It was something that I could have done for you, probably. (laughs) But I can't do this other. Uh, You thank goodness. So those are the prayer requests that we have. This is a good group of people. We're glad you're here. Bow your heads, please. We're going to pray. And if you'd join me. In prayer, uh, come right down with us. We would appreciate you doing that if you feel led. All right, Joe. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you for this day and this time we can come into your house and worship you, Lord. It's nice to come into a warm building and and gather with friends and fellowship, Lord. I'd like a special prayer for those uh, truckers, Lord, that are going yes. across America. Yes. I lift them up to you, Lord. I pray that everything will remain peaceful. I thank you for men and women that will stand up for uh, things that are not right in this country. Uh, I wish more of us would do that. So, Lord, I pray a special blessing on them and their safety, Lord. 
I want to thank you ahead of time. I know it's going to rain one of these days, and I want to thank you for it before it happens because uh, we kind of need some moisture. So uh, that's my prayer, Lord, that, that, that you'll send us some and, and bless this land, Lord. I pray for this worship service, Lord, if yes. there be anybody here that doesn't know you, I pray you'll give Bob the words and the yes. seeds will be planted, Lord, Jesus. and we'll give you all the praise and glory. It's in your son's name we pray. Someone else you'd like to pray? Father, we will always want to come to you with praise for your goodness, for your power, for your strength, for the fact that you gave your son. And Father, you didn't let him get out of suffering, and so I know that that's something that draws us close to you. We're praying um, for the death of the man in Dallas and that family. Father, we don't understand death, and we know it wasn't a part of your original plan. And boy, Father, we just thank you for Bob Mars and the life he lived and the saddles he made and those of us that still enjoy those. We pray for that family. Um, and for Dale Ripper, uh, just putting him in the throne room. And this man who's in detox and rehab, let him know we love him yes. and we're all broken on some level. And we That's just right. all desperately need you. And we pray for text and the the joints that are going to be replaced. And Father, we pray for this nation and I pray for the children and I pray that you just clean house. Um, yes. We're all sinners saved by grace, but Father, we know when our children are being trafficked and our children are being fed garbage uh, in so many different places, we just ask you to come and to move. We're going to praise you, we're going to glorify you, and we're going to trust you. Father, we just love you, and we just thank you that we can come to you in prayer at any time and that you listen to your children and that you love us. Father, I want to pray for uh, my little great-grandkids today. They're not feeling well, and so, Lord, I know you care about everything that happens, and I pray for Leighton and for Slade. I want to pray for uh, uh, those that are going to be traveling this week that you'll take care of them, I know that Sarah and Pat are going to be traveling, so protect them, Lord. We want to praise your holy name and thank you for Bobby being back this morning. It was a blessing to see him, and I pray you keep working in his life and that you'd keep drawing him to you, Lord. You're a great God, and you're good all the time. And, Father, we just I know we need to be thankful and praise you, and I just pray we would be an attitude of gratitude mm -hmm. at all times in Christ's name. Father, we uh, just simply tell you that you've heard us. You've heard our hearts and our, our, our words. And we know that you have listened. Lord, we know that you have preserved these prayers uh, in your great record-keeping system in heaven. And the Bible says that in Revelation, mm -hmm. that uh, the prayers of the saints are kept. That's right. So we know that you keep these prayers and answer them. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. There was a man, more than a man, called Jesus Christ of Galilee. There was a place where Jesus prayed, a place that's called Gethsemane. There on a hill called Calvary, to the cross of agony, nailed to the cross where I should be. He took my place at Calvary. Now I'm a child of royalty, and even angels can believe. My Jesus cried for much for me. He took my place at Calvary. Jesus lives, He lives today, from sin and death He set me free, now 
hand in hand Each place I go Jesus Christ, He walks with me And I ask, how could it be That He should care so much for me The answer comes so tenderly He took my place at Calvary I'm a child of royalty And even angels can believe My Jesus cared so much for me He took my place at Calvary And now my Lord, the Son of God I share with everyone I see I give my best, my all in all Cause Jesus gave so much to me For if His own you wanna be Come join His royal family Let the heart to joyfully He took my place at Calvary I'm a child of royalty Even angels can believe That Jesus cares so much for me He left my soul at Calvary The marketplace is empty, no more traffic in the streets. All the builders' tools are silent, no more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their labors in the courtroom, no debate. Work on earth is all suspended As our King comes through the gate Oh, the King is coming The King is coming I just heard the trumpet sounding And His face soon I'll see Oh, the King is coming, the King is coming, praise God, He's coming for me. Heavy faces line the hallways, those whose lives have been redeemed. Broken homes that he has mended, those from prison he has freed. Little children and the aged, hand in hand, stand all aglow. Who were tripled, broken, ruined, all clad in garments white as snow. Oh, the King is coming, the King is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and His face soon I'll see. Oh, the King is coming, the King is coming, praise God. He's coming for me. I can hear those chariots rumble. Oh, I can see the marching throng. The flurry of God's trumpets spell the end of sin and wrong. Regal robes are now unfolding. Heaven's grand stands all in place. Heaven's choir is now assembled. They start to sing. 
Amazing grace, oh, the King is coming, the King is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and His face soon I see. The King is coming, oh, our King is coming. Praise God, He's coming for us. Amen. <clears throat> Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. We're going to talk this morning about the potter's house. Uh, and uh, we're in Jeremiah 18, and we'll be in Jeremiah 19 as well. So I'd ask you to stand with me if you're, if you're able. If you're not, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Eighteen one. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down at once to the potter's house. There I will reveal my words to you. So I went down to the potter's house and there he was. In my case, it's a she. There she was working away at the wheel. But the jar that uh, he was making from the clay became flawed in the potter's hand, so he made it into another jar, as it seemed right for him to do. The word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not treat you as this potter treats this clay? This is the Lord's declaration, just like clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, house of Israel." At one moment I might announce concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will uproot, tear down, and destroy it. However, if that nation I have made an announcement about turns from this, its evil, I will relent concerning the disaster I had planned to do to it. At another time I announce that I will build and plant a nation or a kingdom. However, if it does what is evil in my sight, by not listening to my voice, I will relent concerning the good that I had said I would do to it. Turn over to 19, Jeremiah 19, verse 1. This is what the Lord says. Go buy a potter's jar. Take some of the elders of the people and some of the leading priests and go out to the valley of Hinnom near the entrance of the potsherd gate. Proclaim there the words I speak to you. Say, hear the word of the Lord, kings of Judah and residents of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, says. I'm going to bring such disaster on this place that everyone who hears about it will shudder. Your, your King James Bible or New King James Bible may say, your ears will tingle because they have abandoned me and made this a foreign place. They have burned incense in it to other gods that they, their fathers, and the kings of Judah have never known. They have filled this place with the blood of the innocent. They have built high places to Baal, on which to burn their children in the fire as burn offerings to Baal, something I have never commanded or mentioned. I never entertained the thought. Therefore, take note, the days are coming. This is the Lord's declaration when this place will no longer be called Topheth and the Valley of Hinnom, but the Valley of Slaughter. You may be seated. It helps me, at least, when we read about a place to know where it is. It helps especially to have stood on a high place and looked down on this very place that we read about today. I was... asked to preach a revival in Fort Sumner, New Mexico, First Baptist Church. On one night of the revival, I think a Monday night, I preached about the potter's house. After the service was over, a young woman came up to me and said, you don't know anything about pottery, do you? I said, no, I, I don't. I admit it, I don't. She said, I am a potter. 
And I invite you to my house, you and the preacher, the pastor. I want you all to come on Thursday afternoon and sit with me at the wheel and form something out of clay. I said, I'll be there. And the pastor, uh, of course, said he would. I'm going to finish that story in a moment. I have, a, I have an, uh, an example, an illustration this morning. It's on the communion table. Do you see that? I will tell you what it started out to be and what it ended up being. The Valley of Hinnom is on the south end of Jerusalem. You can stand near the temple grounds on a high spot and, and you can see the Valley of Hinnom as it comes through Jerusalem. From the east to the west is the Valley of Hinnom on the south end of Jerusalem. It was there that the Israelites had started to burn incense and offer sacrifices to Baal. It was called the Valley of Hinnom, the Valley of Tophet, or Gehenna. I'll talk to you a little bit about those. But the word Toph means drum. Drum. It was called the Valley of the Drum because when they offered their children to Baal, they burned their children uh, to Baal. They offered their, sacri- their children in sacrifice to Baal. And the children cried and screamed. And so they beat drums to keep the people from hearing the cries of the children. So they called it the Valley of Tophet, the Valley of the Drum. The potsherd gate is men- mentioned. It's called the gate of broken pottery. Potter's houses were built on the wall of Jerusalem. The back doors opened out into the valley of Hinnom. The front doors opened toward the temple, and out the front doors came very beautiful uh, pottery to be used in the temple. But if a pot simply didn't make it, if it uh, shattered in the kill, if it uh, just uh, didn't make it uh, and didn't come to the approval of the potter, they threw it out the back door at the potsherd gate where all the pottery fell into the valley of Hinnom and was broken. Now here's the process. And I know the process now. Several years ago, I would not have known it. First, there's the clay. Now when I went to the potter's house on Thursday afternoon, I believe that's when it was, I I was ready to go. Uh, In my heart, I said, give me that clay. And let me sit down at the wheel. Let's get started. Oh, but no, that's never the case. She said, you've got to work the clay. There's two things about clay. It's got air bubbles in it. So you've got to work it and work it and knead it. And uh, it's needy. Clay is needy. And you've got to knead it and and you got to work it in your hands and get all the air bubbles out because if you make something out of that clay, when it's in the kill, it'll just split apart. So you got to work. Also, she said, in the clay, there's little bits of rock. You cannot have that rock. It's imperative that you feel the clay, that you feel very carefully. Make sure. So we... I mean, I thought we never would get around to making anything. All I was doing is making a mess. And uh, we was working, and sure enough, I found a little bit of a rock, and I took it and threw it, threw it uh, aside. And, and she said, uh, keep working, you know. And so we worked and worked at, at getting the air and the rocks out of the clay. 
Can you see Jesus as a potter working on you? There's all sorts of flaws. And those flaws occasionally are fatal. They're always detrimental, but occasionally they are fatal. You're probably sitting there and thinking, I've got a flaw. And I bet I don't even have to prime the pump to get you to, in your own heart to say, this is the flaw. At least this is the most glaring flaw in my life. I know exactly what uh, the potter, God Himself, always deals with when He starts molding me. He touches that spot. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you, in a service like this, I believe with all my heart, God Himself, His Holy Spirit, will speak to you individually. He'll come and stand before you and you, and you, and you, and you, and you stand before you where you're sitting, and He will deal with that flaw in your life. We worked and worked. Then, there's not only the clay, but there's the, the wheel. The wheel. We got, the, finally... We had permission to put the clay on the wheel. So she said, make it a, a ball, kind of a ball. And she said, slam it down on the wheel. There's a, a, there's a little uh, place right in the middle of the wheel. Slam it down. And so I, I, she said, come on. So we took the wheel off and we made it a ball again. And whack! You see, and then she said, start the wheel turning. And as the wheel was going around, she said, take these two fingers and put them down in the middle of the clay. Take this hand on the outside. Bring it up very slowly. And I was doing pretty good. Then I felt something. She said, what do you feel? I said, there's a rock. She said, stop the wheel. So what do we do? Stop. You crunch it down again. Same process. Go through that. Get the rocks out. Listen, folks, I got to tell you, you need to get the rocks out. There's a lot of flaws. There's a lot of flaws. And guess when the flaw becomes apparent? When? In the heat of the kill. That's when the flaw becomes apparent. It, does, it probably doesn't even show until you put it under pressure and put it in the heat and then all of a sudden it explodes. How about you? I had a friend in uh, Logan, New Mexico by the name of Horace Kennedy. He pastored First Baptist Church of Logan for years. Horace Kennedy was paid the greatest compliment I've ever heard anybody being paid. And somebody said about Horace, they said, if you stuck a pin in Horace Kennedy anywhere, you'll get Jesus. Isn't that good? But most of us, when we are stuck, when we are under pressure, when somebody cuts us off in traffic, when somebody passes in the passing lane, in the, in the turn lane and nearly sideswipes you, when somebody pulls into the parking lot and bangs your car, whack, when the pressure's on, what do you do? A lot of times that flaw shows up right away. See, and Jesus' purpose is to get rid of the flaw. So we started again and we slammed it down and, and I started the wheel again. Now, I will tell you this. Because you're wondering, maybe. I started up. I was going to make a vase. I was going to... I, this started out as a flower vase. And I started up, and uh, I was working, and I was bringing it up real slowly, and it got tall, and it got taller, and, and she said, get up, 
uh, off the seat. Uh, you're going to lose it. And so I, I slipped off. She, and, and this is, she took a knife. I never will forget. She took a knife that day and, and just started here. And the wheel was going around. And she cut it off right there. She finished it out. She pulled it this way and pulled it this way to make a heart. And on the back, after she had painted it and put it in the kill, it says Psalms 34. But this is quite a useful candy dish. But it didn't start out to be a candy dish. Started out to hold flowers. Now to hold Hershey Kisses. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, at least it's useful. At least it's useful. And I thanked her so much on uh, Saturday night or Sunday when I was leaving town because she had put it in the kill, hardened it, put a finish on it, put it in the kill again. And this is what came out. Every time I see it, I, I'm reminded of that potter in Fort Sumner, New Mexico, who took a pot that was going to be a failure and turned it into a candy dish. I wonder what you started out to be. I wonder when the potter began to work in your life, what he wanted you to be and what you turned out to be. Is that a failure? I don't think so. I don't consider this a failure. I consider it an alternate plan. I consider it my life. I'm certain that God uh, really had big, bigger plans for me, maybe, or better plans. But I think what He did was took a lump of clay that was going to be wasted and made something useful out of it. I don't hold flowers, but I can hold two pounds of kisses. <laughs> well, a lot of people look at the wheel like life. Circumstances come, don't they? I mean, you're on a wheel like a, a hamster on a wheel. And a lot of things come, don't they? Those are circumstances of life. The potter's always working. And, and, and a lot of times, if you're sensitive enough, you'll feel His hand in your life. And you'll feel His other hand out here working, forming. Making you into what you ought to be. That's the process. That's the potter. Working. If I was going to paint a picture, I'd paint the picture of a man or a woman, a potter, working lovingly and patiently over a lump of clay at the wheel, at the wheel, very gently bringing that pot along to where it can be useful. And then on purpose, putting it in the heat, intense heat, putting it under pressure, have you ever felt that? Have you ever, uh, have you ever noticed that God sometimes insists that you go in the kill? And that the, the temperature is high and the pressure is intense. But if you survive that, He brings you out. Then He paints you. Puts you back in. Well, Jeremiah was told to go to the potter's house and watch that process. Here's the picture, and I'm almost through. First, I want you to see the patience of the potter. Jeremiah saw him. He was working on a pot, and, and the pot was flawed in his hand. He reached down in that, and, and I, I know exactly how that feels. And he felt something, an air bubble, a rock. He said, this will never do. And so he stopped the wheel, he crunched the clay down, he formed it and molded it again, put it on the wheel, and again he started the wheel. And he put his fingers inside. Do you ever feel God's hand, God's fingers 
feeling around your heart. My dad always prayed a prayer. I don't know where he got this, but my dad was the only one I ever heard pray this prayer at all. But he said, finger around the heart of every person in this service. Finger around the heart. I laid on the table Friday morning and a man took a little instrument and put hot jelly and rubbed it all over my chest and did an echocardiogram. But he couldn't go inside. He could only work from the outside. The potter in all his patients works on the inside. And when he sees that you're flawed, sometimes he stops the wheel and crunches you down. Starts it all over again. He's uh, the ultimate picture of patience as he deals with you. There's not only the patience of the potter, there's the probation of the potter. There's a line where the potter won't cross. A line where he'll see that this pot that he was making will never work out. It won't ever make it. It will never do. And so Jeremiah, Jeremiah 19 saw the potter working, but he saw the, the pot was flawed and it will not do. So he took it to the back door, not out the front door to be used at the temple, but he took it out the back door, threw it out into the valley of Hinnom, and broke the pot that didn't make it. There's a line of probation. A line when the potter says, I've done all I can do. I've tried. I've tried over and over and over again. I've tried, but this pot will never do. And so into the valley of Hinnom it goes. The valley of Hinnom is the picture of hell. It's called Gehenna. At the time of Jesus, it was a dump ground. It was a place where they uh, threw trash and so forth, and, and it was always burning. There was always a fire burning. Dead animals. And in fact, the uh, bodies of criminals crucified on the cross were thrown out into Gehenna. The smell was awful. Have you ever been to a dump ground years ago? And uh, somebody would take some tires, old tires out there and throw them out and they're burning and it's black smoke. Somebody's dog has died and they took it to the dump. And uh, there's maggots. Jesus said Gehenna... Hell is a place where the fire never is quenched and the worms never die. That's the picture. That's exactly what Gehenna was like. That is the picture of what hell might be. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to be as factual as I can. I'd like to kind of be a news reporter. Here's what I know. Here's what I know Jesus said. Do you know Jesus spoke more about hell than He did heaven? He was warning people all the time, don't go. Lots of people say, I don't believe in a God who would allow a man or a woman to perish in hell forever and ever and ever and never have the hope of coming out. And Jesus said, that's exactly what's ahead for those of us who defy the potter and simply say no. When we feel His hand working with us, we rebel. We back away. We quit. We find somebody, somebody to uh, be offended at or we find someplace else to go. And we become a pot that simply doesn't work out. So, some lumps... And you're nothing but a lump of clay. Some lumps 
went out the front door. Beautiful, artistic, and they were taken to the temple to be used as vessels of honor. Some were swept up out of the kill and taken to the back door and tossed out at the potsherd gate to remain forever in Gehenna or the Valley of Hinnom. Let me ask you, do you ever sense the potter working with you? Trying to make a... He started out as a flower vase and you're down to a candy dish, but at least you're a candy dish. At least you're useful. At least you're beautiful. At least you've been uh, touched by the Master. You didn't go out the back door. You went out the front door to service. You went out the front door to be used as a vessel of honor. Do you, any of you have a vessel of honor at your house? You know what I'm talking about? Got to get these things off for a minute. Do any of you, anybody have a vessel of honor that you use on special occasions at your house? Nobody? We do. We have a vessel of honor. It's a red plate. Now there's lots of vessels at our house that are honorable. Some of them came from mother, my mother. Some of them came from Glenda's mother, Helen McClellan. They're, they're honorable. But we have a red plate. In fact, that red plate is in a cardboard frame. And it's to be used by birthday people only if there's a special occasion. It's a plate of honor. It's a vessel of honor. It's only used occasionally. And it's used by a person that we choose to honor. A red plate. I don't even remember. I wish I'd have brought it. I don't remember what it says. Uh, but it has something about a, a special plate. It's a vessel of honor at our house. At our house. I pray that you're a vessel of honor. That when God has a special thing to do, He drags you out. And He uses you for a special occasion. Because He's patiently worked on you. He's put you on the wheel numerous times maybe before He ever put you in the kill. And you came out the front door to useful service as a vessel of honor. Bow your heads please. Close your eyes. Father, as the potter works with the clay, so you work with us. And even today, you're working with us. Somebody here is being molded. Maybe the hand of the potter is right now feeling around somebody's heart. Maybe there's a rock there. Maybe there's a hard place. Maybe there's a, a place that just won't yield. There's, there's a defeated attitude. There's something there. And the potter begins to, and he says, this won't do. This won't do. And so he mashes the, the vessel down and he begins the process all over again to make a vessel of honor. To make a vessel of usefulness in this world. Father, I pray that you'll speak into somebody's heart even this morning about this very thing that, Lord, they keep saying no to you. They keep resisting you. All the while, you're trying to form them into a, a, a person, a pot, piece of pottery that's useful, that's beautiful, that's a vessel of honor. And I pray, God, that you'll bring that truth home in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, band's going to play. Maybe you'd like to talk with me. Maybe you'd like to come down.
grab my hand and let's, let's pray. Perhaps you'd like to receive Christ. You've never done that for sure. Perhaps you've been away and you're coming back. We saw that last Sunday. A man who's been away has come back. And he, he really has a heart to come back to you. Maybe you're a, a person like that. Maybe you feel the potter's hands even this morning, but you, you feel the resistance from yourself saying, I, I can't do that. I could never do that. I, I don't want to do that. I, I won't do that. And he'll keep patiently working. But there is a line of probation. Potter says, this simply won't do. This simply won't do. We'll wait a moment. Thank you so much. Would you stand? <clears throat> thank you for listening so well. I always thank you for that. Uh, you don't have to come and you don't have to listen. But you do choose to do that. And uh, I'm always excited about that. This is a great group of people. Thank you for being here. God bless you. If you know of somebody needing a church, uh, tell them about uh, the church. But we're trying to reach folks that uh, what's the purpose of Crossroads Country Church? Reach. reach the unreached. If you know somebody who's unreached, reach out. God bless you. Your holy hands, let's sing. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to love. Celestial shore, I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away. Oh, glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, bye.